on today's podcast. The truth is, adding value will never go out of style. Hello, and thanks for joining us for another Five Things Podcast. Brian Smith here, and I've got a, a great couple guys here from Fayette, Nam, North Carolina, otherwise known as Fayetteville. And uh, introduce yourself, fellas. How you doing? I'm Derek Haley, uh, Tactical Mortgage CEO. I uh, grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, moved up to Raleigh for a good 20 years of my life, and uh, about three years ago, back to Fayetteville. So definitely... Uh, different city down there with, with real estate and uh, buddy here next to me is Gary Futch and I'll introduce him as well. Awesome. Gary? I'm Gary Futch and I've been in Fayetteville for about 21 years now. I uh, was a graduate of Methodist College and now it's even a university, but I've been there ever since. Okay. Well, how'd you guys end up meeting each other? Uh, funny story. So about... 13 years, 14 years ago, I was a preferred lender for a big builder down in Fayetteville, McKee Homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was working with McKee Homes, Gary was introduced by another sales agent, met him at Luigi's restaurant down in Fayetteville. And Luigi's, I haven't been there in forever. I know that place. Good. Yeah, Good it is. Yeah. Uh, so Gary and I met there one day and ever since kind of pretty much tag teamed, ran away since. Nice. Okay. And, uh, both of you are from North Carolina originally or from somewhere else originally? I'm originally from Florida. Okay. I moved up to North Carolina in eighth grade, so pretty much. Almost from here now. Almost from here, yeah. but all my adult life I've been in Fayetteville. Okay. And yes, me as well. I uh, We moved here when I was, my father was military for 28 years and Fort Bragg was his last stop. Okay. Uh, five boys, so Fort Bragg was probably about two years, three years old. So North Carolina is what I claim. Yeah, I'll tell you that water's rough down in Fayetteville. I can, I can personally vouch for that. Just having kids left and right. So <laughs> it's clearly the water. So moved out of Fayetteville. I never had any more kids. So I figured that was it. <laughs> That's right. You were um, a, uh, your ex military. Yeah, it was 82nd yeah. airborne division. Yeah. So it's, uh, I always kind of joke around. They don't pay you a lot to jump out of planes and get shot at. So, uh, at the end of the day, it was a great experience though. I was 17 when I made my first jump, but, uh, uh, turned 18 in jump school, actually. But uh, so we're here today to, to talk about tactical mortgage and some of the, the uh, advantages of dealing with professionals like yourself. But what uh, what what mistakes do you think you've made in the past? Uh, if you could give some advice to some young, maybe some young uh, sales professionals coming up or some people that are aspiring to be a business owner one day, I'm putting you on the spot here. So uh what, what's kind of the first thing that comes to mind if you're talking to a, a young man who's, let's say he's a waiter at Luigi's right now, and he's seeing, seeing Derek rolling up, Derek's having a bad day, the, the forgot the key to the Bentley, you know, really rough day, and, uh, you know, he's aspiring like, I'd like to have a bad day like that. <laughs> what would you tell that guy? What's, what, what's one of the number one things you would say that he's got to really wrap his head around? Personally, I would say, I mean, I did grow up fast. You know, I moved out of my, my folks' house when I was 16. Um, so I did grow up fast, had an apartment by my senior year of high school. So I kind of, looking back at my life, I mean, I'm very happy, everything that I've done in my life and, you know, built character and all that good stuff throughout my years. But if anything, I'd probably slow down my life a little bit mm -hmm. if I could. And uh, one thing I've always looked at is, you know, try not to judge the competition around you. And, you know, you kind of get caught up in that, in the profession that we're in, mm. I mean, many of professions, but, you know, as I started focusing on me and my family and my needs, it kind of drew me away from all the competition, knowing that, you know, everybody's out here doing the same thing, trying mm -hmm. to eat and just, you know, just, just focus on yourself and focus what's going to build you and what your family needs from you. And, and just basically it'll take off as God, you know, prepares it for you. So, you know, definitely go ahead not to I catch up. I definitely off. say that's, that's where I've focused and learned to, to build my career around these later days in my life. You know, there's a, uh, there's a couple things that come to mind. It's a, there's a saying, it says winners focus on winning and, and losers focus on winners. 
And I think there's some truth to that. The other thing that I think about when, when you're talking is, uh, to me, my post a long time ago, but I love the meme. It's they're showing, uh, horses that are racing and with the horses, they put blinders on them. So the, what they do is they get the horses looking at the path, looking at the goal, not at the competition. And, uh, you know, I think those are great tips. It's, it's, it's easy to look at the competition and, you know, well, those guys aren't that good or you want to talk bad about them. And, and at the end of the day, it kind of makes, makes yourself look bad, mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of cases. Now you, you do have to help people get educated about, you know, that rate is, is different than our rate. And here's what you're getting. I mean, but there's a way to do that. There's a way to talk about the competition, but but the, I would say the other thing about that is just the mental energy aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and being a single guy, I was talking to another single uh, friend uh, recently, and they were getting a little discouraged and this and that. And and I think it, the shoe fits for this scenario too. Is like, you know, if I'm if I'm interested in someone, and ultimately she's not interested back at the same level I am, I don't get mad. I don't get dis. I mean, you might be a little disappointed. <laughs> But I want to take that energy and say, okay, well, what can I improve? Mm -hmm. You know, that didn't work out and maybe I wanted it to. What can I improve? She's not a bitch. You know, she's not a jerk or he's not a jerk or whatever. It's, you know what? I need to improve. Yes. You know, if I was a billionaire, if I was had ripped abs, which I probably never will because I love wine too much and coffee creamer. But, you know, there's things that I can do to make myself more appealing uh, and you could probably say the same thing about doing mortgages or anything like that is, is if I miss an opportunity to sell a security system, what could I have done differently? How could I make the company better and more appealing? Um, and so I, I think like those are good tips that because I mean, basically strategy is, you know, doing comparing rates and going that side of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, the strategy is kind of what. I focus on at that side of it, you know, the, the competition's always going to be out there mm -hmm. and without them, you know, it, it wouldn't even be a game to us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that, I love to have the competition out there. It's what makes my job even fun. Um, and the clients I get to deal with, but with that, it's, it's almost, you know, what prepares us to wake up four 30 in the morning and, and take this every day as serious as we do mm -hmm. knowing this is the biggest purchase of somebody's life. So, with that, you know, that side of it, the competition, I keep a strategy, but still, you know, I, I want everybody to win. I mean, that's the focus that mm -hmm. I kind of wake up and know that if I feel that way towards everybody, then I'm going to live the right way. And, you know, if, if I'm taken out today, then, you know, at least I know I did everything the right way. Right. And the last thing I want to touch on, you've had a bunch of time to think about this one. So <laughs> the other thing is the abundance mentality versus a lack mentality. So when you when you understand that there's more than enough mortgages out there for a lot of people, maybe not everybody, but maybe you shouldn't be a mortgage broker, you know? So there's more than enough security systems out there. Maybe not everybody, but maybe they need to find uh, a different field. So when you have an abundance mentality, there's more than enough. And so you can, you can not sweat the fact that Bob down the street is doing so great. You know, it's, Hey, be happy for Bob that spirit of gratitude, that spirit, that spirit of, uh, that you're putting out in the universe, I think will end up benefiting you anyway. Just be glad for Bob, you know? Mm -hmm. So what, what do you think about, uh, if you had to coach up some young, uh, human being, I don't want to assign any genders, but you know, a young human being coming up in the world, what, uh, what would you recommend? Well, I would definitely recommend being the best at whatever you choose to do. Mm -hmm. And even if your current standpoint is a waiter at Luigi's or mm -hmm. um, it's really being the best at it. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you don't start right and show up on time and uh, try to meet the guests and uh, be quick to serve and get in good with the cooks to make sure your food gets out quicker. Right. You know, there's there's always things you can do to be the best at what you what you're currently doing. Totally. And then after you perfect being a waiter, you can set your sights on you know bigger avenues. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a habit, right? Success is a habit, and uh, I love what you're talking about because you know when I got out of the military, I was uh, I, I worked at Woodlake Country Club, which is mm -hmm. in Vass, yeah. uh, and being uh, employed 
and you want to add value to other people, here's the other thing. People are watching. You know, if you're out there, let's say you are the waiter at Luigi's, and every time uh, you guys go in there, this young guy is in there, and he's always upbeat and happy. What's up, fellas? Knows your name. Handles business, this and that. Uh, you know, after a while, you're like, man, this kid is sharp. Yeah, this. I want to create an opportunity for this guy. And, and maybe a situation where, you know, uh, there's a lot of commission jobs out there, obviously, because that's, you know, that's the way it works in the world a lot of times. And, and uh, that's the way people are optimally motivated uh, was when they're commission only versus a big salary. Um, but let's say you're more likely to take a risk on, on somebody like that because of their attitude and their work ethic and, and they're just being around uh, guys like you and all of a sudden they get an opportunity thrown in front of them whereas you might have been waited on by three or four other people that you didn't even th- it just never even occurred to you as a business owner to give those people an opportunity but this guy he's just his energy his shine it's just like man this is a guy that i can i can mentor and, and turn into a little you know six-figure hustler right here opportunities usually come to everyone mm-hmm. it's just taking advantage of those opportunities at the right time mm-hmm. That's what really separates people in their growth. Right. And uh, what's the saying, uh, Henry Ford? It said opportunity. Opportunity is usually disguised because it's dressed in work clothes, something like that. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty good one. But uh, obviously, being in the mortgage industry now, Tactical Mortgage, if I'm understanding correctly, you guys came together to form Tactical Mortgage, and uh, obviously with a real estate background, right? Right. Uh, and a mortgage background. And so you guys, you guys have a lot of background in, in what an ideal mortgage company would look like. Um, so if you wanted to, to jump right into kind of the five things topic, we could certainly go that direction as well. Let's do it. What, what do you think the, the number one thing would be to, uh, if you're thinking about getting a mortgage or shopping around for, for a mortgage? Uh, if you're shopping around for a mortgage, I would say your number one or the number one question we get is always going to be the interest rate, Mm -hmm. your interest rate, what, you know, how long the mortgage is going to be the amortization, Mm -hmm. um, payment is going to be the big key that comes up and really in a sense of things, a lot of, I I would say consumers don't know about a mortgage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a lot of first time home buyers, which, an agent would kind of chime them in before they even come to the mortgage lender. Mm -hmm. But with that, I mean, it's, it mainly is going to be focused on the interest rate, their payment. And then from there we kind of take and say, okay, this is what we're going to dissect, Mm -hmm. getting your application taken, looking at your credit. We'll know where to kind of put you in product wise, how much income you have coming in. And then from there we can kind of get back with our agent or our business partner and let them know that Mm -hmm. this is the, this is the number we want to stay at. Here's their pre-approval based on that number. Right. And we'll, you know, add the address to it as they find the property. Let me ask you this. Someone that's uh, maybe thinking about getting a mortgage and they, they see some mortgage company on TV or something like that, that they're obviously that's kind of a call center type environment. They're trying to sell mortgages over the phone. We deal with this in the security industry. Some company selling from out of state, selling them security over the phone kind of a thing. The, the one thing I want to tell people is, you know, it would be cheaper for me to just sell over the phone, mm-hmm. but it's right. generally right. speaking for the, in the security industry, for sure, it's not what's best for the consumer. Mm-hmm. So what would you guys say about someone's thinking about shopping mortgages over the phone? What, what, what are the, like something you would generally think that you bring to the table versus those phone type companies? Well, we definitely yep. encourage people to shop around. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we want to do a tactical mortgage is kind of be a no-brainer you know somebody that somebody can go to Mm -hmm. and get the best interest rate and really the best product for them um you know over there at Fayetteville Mm -hmm. you know we're largely VA but we really specialize in just about everything we can help investors um if somebody wants to be an entrepreneur and buy a property Mm -hmm. um an owner-occupied property or just an investor, we can work those clients as well and put them with the best product that matches up to them. Mm-hmm. But there's also FHA, USDA, and conventional, and um, basically trying to get the best products so we do get the low interest rates. Mm-hmm. And being a broker, 
we can actually shop around to different banks to make sure that you don't have to make several phone calls. But we encourage people to make those phone calls mm -hmm. because we want them to have their own perk. Sure. And uh, ultimately, being a broker, you can help them get in the best product uh, by, by knowing what you're doing. So they're not in some, you know, you may not want to be in a VA loan if you could be in this other loan that's lower interest rate, maybe less money up front or something along those lines, right? Yes, sir. Like no funding fee. VA charges a funding fee. So right. if the client does have 20% from their previous home. They might want to put that down. But when rates were low, you know, borrow money when rates are high, you know, borrow less money. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the, to the circumstance of what's best for that client, we get in, dig into it. And we're not just an eight to five, you know, individual as a mm -hmm. broker, you know, we know that we're going to service you, take care of you nine o'clock at night. We still answer our phone mm -hmm. call centers. They're going to be there. We call them application takers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to be there, take your call, get the application, throw it in. You're never going to hear from them again. You might hear from John or Becky the mm -hmm. next day or two days later, however long it is. And next thing you know, you know, you're, you're not going to get the same service. So we kind of take that at heart to make sure that we provide you know, the best service, the best product, the best rates, and cheapest as well mm -hmm. across the board when it comes to closing costs. Try to find that balance when you're still, still bringing service to the table. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's always good to set those expectations as well. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever their variables are, to make sure we're upfront, honest, uh, even with closing dates and making sure we order appraisals and different things on time. Mm -hmm. You know, my job is to make sure the operations are fully functioning and pushing forward in right. a timely manner. Uh, so us setting those expectations is what we try to do best because if somebody's expecting it, it's not bad. You know, the thing I'm, again, just looking at the business model kind of thing is the thing I like that if I'm doing business or I'm trying to get a mortgage, let's say I'm trying to get my dream house, I actually want to deal with somebody that's incentivized to get my deal done. Uh, if I'm dealing with someone making, you know, 20 bucks an hour in Oklahoma or something, you know, if the deal doesn't close, it doesn't affect them. They're still they getting lie. paid. Yeah. Uh, whereas if, if I know if I'm working with a mortgage broker and the deal doesn't close, he's just about as upset as I am, yeah. right. you know? So I, I like to have everybody row in the same, same way in the boat, so to yeah. speak. I don't want someone just sitting back there taking a nap. Well, you can't go grab them by the ear when they do wrong. You well, know, there's that too. Yeah. Right at any point locally in Fayetteville and come sit with me and speak to me about what you're happy about or what you're upset about. So right. it definitely makes a difference. You know, I'm not going to fly to New Jersey to go talk to, you know, the individual that I did an application with sure. that might be in there or might not based right. on, you know, eight to five or if he works three days a week or remote or whatever. So, I mean, the big, the big difference of broker, I, I was a retail loan officer for 17 years before I became a broker. And to be honest with you, as a broker, I learned, a, I learned a whole different game to this business to where, you know, they don't want you on the retail side to even know what the broker world is because they will kind of tell you, hey, you don't have control of your file. You, you know, you can't call underwriters, this, that, and the other. <clears throat> but as a broker, I've learned the total opposite. Like we have, you know, several different account executives at every company. Um, the that they'll call you weekly to make sure the files going fine. And, you know, you well, their job is to keep you as a client. Yes. Right. So they want to push the files. They want to make sure deals are getting closed. Yes. And that being said, I mean, I've, I've learned so much about this business by being on both sides mm -hmm. that, you know, opening up a company was my only choice to go from there and do it in the broker world. So, you know, one day my dream would be to, you know, have my own lending company with a bank and commercial business behind it. And we're looking to build that right now, but you know, that's going to take time. But with that, I would, I wouldn't walk back to the retail world, just FYI or call center, you know, just knowing I can take care of the client the best that I can as a broker. And so basically we've talked a lot about the business model and how important that is, uh, when you're looking at doing a mortgage. Um, so number two, I think you mentioned was, was the team that you guys have that you're excited about. Yes, sir. Yeah. So basically we, uh, starting a company, we, knew where we needed to head based on in-house you know i've always since day one you know i had a, a team with my brother and two processors slash assistants mm -hmm. and an in-house processor so knowing how this business works you know a lot of people use the corporate 
aspect of on the retail side they'll send all their deals you know to Arizona from North Carolina and you don't have any access really but whenever they reach back out to you in this business to update you on what's going on with your files so knowing for several years how I started in this business was anything you can do with having everything around you is going to make you very successful no mm-hmm. matter you have to spend the money for it or not it, it's it's going to allow you to triple your to mm-hmm. triple your worth so with that we ended up you know taking that part of the pie and mixing it in with you know a difference on a broker side where it's not normal because you have your account executives at the lender you're using you have processing at those lenders it's also instead of just hiring you know myself and other retail loan officers to come over other brokers it's molding those processors in the house with us so we have uh you know myself and gary we have sam that's the executive assistant to the company as well as a processor we hired kim on board out of new orleans or louisiana she's another processor with 25 years experience and then we have two other brokers as well okay so starting basically small to make sure everything pretty much molds together Mm -hmm. as we expand yeah get that foundation and what's crazy is as a business owner it doesn't sound small to me because i'm thinking payroll i'm thinking (laughs) paid vacations you know sick days uh you know lunch for the office so it's a big financial commitment uh to take on that kind of uh risk essentially because you got to produce And that's where, you know, as a business owner, when I hire technicians or hire admin or one of the, we're looking at uh, hiring someone for an operations position to manage inventory and deal with all that, you know, that's a financial commitment that you're making. Uh, But the the goal is to create that customer experience. And you saying that when we first took the name on and, you know, this has been in the making for over 12 months. I mean, it's, it's a long process Couple years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to get a mortgage business over. Sure. So you got so many, you know, anything financially company back with lending. Lots of paperwork. Lots of lots paperwork. Of paperwork. So, <laughs> and having the back and behind you. So right. with that, you know, we, we had that, I guess, the sense of what we were going to go into this with was kind of created him and I, mm-hmm. maybe one processor, one assistant. But me, I always like to go balls to the wall. So yeah. I looked at him and said, hey, we got two brokers getting licensed. We got three in Raleigh getting licensed, going through the class. And now, you know, at the same time, we have two more getting licensed. Mm-hmm. So we have a pretty big amount of, a large amount of people that are looking to come on board right now mm-hmm. and take over from what they were previously doing. Now, where that kind of leads us to, you know, overnight, I mean, it's it, it, anything can happen. So, right. you know, we're looking to break other states and, you know, take this thing national. That's the goal. So yeah. With that, you know, hey, man, you're jumping into number four. Just slow down there, Speed Razor. Sorry. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but uh, the, the last thing I wanted to wrap up with that, not to steal your thunder, but the, the tough thing about being a business owner sometimes is you have to you have to commit to the payroll. You have to add the people. And a lot of times you're doing that before the P&L justifies it. Uh, before it really kind of makes sense because you got to have the foundation laid to build the house. Right. And so that's where I think a lot of business owners, maybe if you're too tight with the money uh, or you're not willing to sacrifice. Uh, I know I've taken pay cuts to bring people on in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just think if you're going to, if you're going to grow appropriately, make sure customer service doesn't fall off. You know, as a business owner, you're taking those risks. Uh, and you got to be willing to suck it up for, you know, three, six, 12 months, whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like you guys have, uh, with all those names that I'm hearing, it sounds like you guys have definitely, uh, you're planning for the future. Yes, sir. Um, so number three, we got relationships and you're obviously coming from the, the real estate background. Right, right. Well, uh, there's nothing more important than having a quality relationship. And, and with that, we want to create positive relationships with not only our account execs, with the banks, uh, but also realtors. Um, me being on the real, real estate side, real estate broker, um, I had the privilege of working with Derek for all mm-hmm. these years. And basically his one-on-one attention to detail and actually making me a better broker. Mm-hmm. You know, he was able to describe 
and, and don't get me wrong, I had a couple sales before, you know, we started working with each other, but I really didn't know the ins and outs of the other side. Right. You know, he was able to educate me on um, how this goes through, what we can do to make sure that the client's expectations are met. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, you know, uh, having to use someone else. Of course, as real estate brokers, you know, we don't have total control of who the client uses. The client can use whoever they want. Mm -hmm. um, and they go to a Wells Fargo. Sure. We'll just say any bank. Right. Um, but, um, you know, they're like, hey, this client's not approved. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's that's no good. You mm -hmm. know, they really wanted to use you. Uh, when do you think, you know, they'll be able to purchase a home? And she kind of just stuttered and was like, what do you mean? Like they're done with it. They're done. This, yeah. This is over. We're out. Um, and I then sent him over to Derek. And Derek was able to give them a timeline, <clears throat> expectations, and what they needed to do to make it fit within that lending parameters to where you could issue them a loan. And I think that one was an FHA loan. So of course they had parameters for you to fall into, but there's something a client can do to improve their credit and make sure that uh, when those things fall off, you know, they're back qualified. Those are all great points you bring up. And uh, so at the end of the day, relationships are really important to you because you're coming from that side of the business. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So catering to, to realtors and people that value their clients obviously is a, is a great resource for you. Most definitely. I mean, yeah. Derek doesn't take no for an, you know, an answer. So when he's talking with banks and trying to get things through, mm -hmm. if there is a way, if there's mm -hmm. really, because some, some people will, uh, push back if the file, you know, does look um, a little different than, you know, the perfect norm. Right. Um, but Derek has usually worked through an issue like that before. If it's not a federal guideline for them not to get a loan, you know, he'll be able to get it through if possible. And that's really where I think, to your point, relationships are important because rather than, uh, you know, you send it off to a big name bank and, and, right. and you know, it's, it doesn't quite fit the program. They just kick it out and they're done with you. Mm -hmm. Whereas somebody like your organization, they'll get involved with the client and say, Hey, well, let's take a look at this. How can we, maybe we can't get it done today, but how can we get it done three months from now or right. six months from now, a year from now and start? sounds like you, you got the ability to kind of get people on a game plan. Well, every file is different. So, you know, if you do a loan, Gary does a loan, I do a loan. Mm -hmm. Everybody's background is different. You bought different things in your lifetime. He's mm -hmm. bought different things. Um, I've had different jobs than you, than him. So time frames on jobs. So every month I'm literally seeing at least three to four deals minimum of what I get from other lenders to have to pretty much correct and fix so the client doesn't lose their earnest money or the due diligence <clears throat> or anything they have in the deal. So... Uh, we just closed one probably about 15 to 30 days ago with a new realtor in Fayetteville that pops up into the office one day and I'm working that deal that Wells Fargo, not to mention a company, but <clears throat> that they dropped the ball on and it came over to me. Right. And next thing you know, it's a manufactured home. The client doesn't speak good English. Um, his, his wife's involved on all the financing side, you know, getting me all the paperwork. Well, the realtor shows up to meet Gary and pops downstairs to come introduce herself to me since I'm working that file. Mm -hmm. And now she's sending me deals from there. So, and this is a, you know, ongoing experience in this business. As you get, as you get creative in the financing side, you can basically look at something and say, no, that's not right. That underwriter's basically <clears throat> pushing back on something they shouldn't be pushing back on. So, you know, I'll go and, you know, we'll put the boxing gloves on and, go, you know, bout for bout. And bang it out, yeah. Yeah, we'll bang it out, and then I'll tell them why I think it's a good deal. And at the end of the day, it goes up the chain, and, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to go my way. That's because you know where to pick your spots, too, probably. Right. You know, yes, yeah. If it's not exactly. a good deal, I won't <clears throat> write it. So it's, you know, it, it's one of those things where all different things, somebody behind on a license that they're worried about their license being signed for, mm -hmm. as an underwriter, I get it, why they're, why they push back sure but if it's something that's not in the guidelines i'm going to tell them you know that that's not what i agree with and you know take it up the chain of command mm -hmm. 
And I'm sure that, you know, we're here to write loans. Sure. We're not here to deny people. Right. So at the end of the day, you know, it's it's the best for the client. It's the best for all involved. And, you know, you don't want somebody to just throw five grand away on earnest money. Or sure. Whatever. So you're going to go to bat for them. And, right. You know, we always take those wins and we, you know, chalk them off the hands and go to the next one. Yeah. So, and that's the power of relationships. Because, again, you're looking someone eye to eye. You're not, you know, just getting them off the phone. Yes. Yeah, because um, they don't see them. The underwriters don't know, you know, sure. Brian Smith, Derek just a Smith, file. or Gary Fudge. Yes, sir. Yeah. They just know the file. Just a file and a social. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so that's uh, that's relationships. And then next up, we've got uh, the direction of tac- uh, tactical mortgage. Yes, so you guys are doing uh, commercial as well, yes, right? Sir. Yeah. So our main uh, bread and butter is residential. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20 years, like I said, in the business of that, uh, this past several six to 12 months we've been getting heavily into commercial um grant murray homes gary works for and part owner uh his company also has a commercial division Mm -hmm. and they refer his business and other realtors in fable that get business on the commercial side you know they're not all realtors kind of look for the commercial but sometimes it comes to them Mm -hmm. so you know last month i did a uh, fitness center and a tattoo parlor and this month we're doing a mental health company um a therapist and you know it's it's all broad around the board different types of businesses but we're kind of launching into at the time we're wanting to launch into a national phase of you know, any type of commercial all the way to development of neighborhoods, to builder financing, to Mm. many a different commercial avenues. So that's what we're on right now. So what does that look like? If you're a business owner right now watching this podcast and you're thinking about buying a flex space, Mm -hmm. what what does something look look like? Let's say it's a $800,000 flex space. Financing terms, what are you looking at? Like 20% down? Most are going to be about anywhere between, if you're doing asset base where they don't look at your income, Mm -hmm. just your credit, and basically the assets to be able to put Mm -hmm. down on it, they're going to put you at anywhere between 25 to 30%. Down. That's the norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the norm, 25 to 30%. You don't have to show any income, which is strong. The rates are a little higher. Sure. But that's because you're getting away with, you know, your income not being so high. Well, sure. And they're protecting themselves because, you know, you're putting 30% down. That's a big chunk of cash. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You obviously believe you're going to be able to make that payment if you're putting down, you know, 20, what is it? $240,000. Yes, yeah, that's a big chunk. Um, but uh, so, okay, well, that's good to know because I, I think a lot of people, it can be a tim- intimidating when you're thinking about that kind of stuff and you just don't know. For sure. As a uh, business owner, too. Yeah, for sure. The business started up. <clears throat> most of these are two to four years in, some mm-hmm. of them a little bit fresher. So it it's definitely could be a scary thing depending on how they know, you know, profit and loss and what they're doing. A lot of factors, for sure. So uh, you've got national aspirations, mm-hmm. uh, getting in the commercial space. Obviously, residential is the bread and the butter for you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, what uh, any anything else worth mentioning that you'd like to say about kind of the long term vision of the company? So, with the with the long term, you know, our we're always going to be customer driven. Mm-hmm. It's all about our customers and clients first, and you know, as a company, we want to make sure we take care of everybody working for us as well. Right. So as we proceed and keep moving forward, you know, we will open up more states and that's what we're working on right now. Mm-hmm. You know, right now we're in North Carolina, California, and we will be branching off East Coast, Midwest. You know, this will take a little bit of time. But sure. Growth comes and Sounds like a lot of paperwork. Man, it's, it's <laughs> definitely a lot of paperwork. But, you know, with that, it's, it, I got a great team and, you know, having me go into this by myself would have been overwhelming Mm -hmm. and having somebody like Gary there with me it's been you know the long nights and you know just creating logos even I mean Mm -hmm. it can get I mean you know nothing decorated too much on a logo but it can get you know you got 17 choices and you're you know you're sitting there and just which one do you want to go with so it's 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 a lot of work but our goals are you know taking this over to become a national lender on very many levels of everybody saying, who do you go to, you know, to get your mortgage with, Mm -hmm. you know, just for example, I watch securities, Mm -hmm. tactical mortgage. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those things where I haven't seen a national lender on the commercial side. And we talk about this all the time. Nobody advertises a national commercial lender. Mm -hmm. Now residential, you see all over the board, but just, you don't see that in the commercial aspect. Nobody's that good at it. 
when I first started heavily getting into the commercial side of residential brokerage, um, I was really trying to find the perfect team member because we were a team. You know, we would work the best for our client and try to really polish up that customer care, mm -hmm. set those expectations. And when you're trying to close 10 to 20 deals per a month, I mean, you become very friendly, yeah. of course. Um, but with that, I couldn't find that one bank or that one system or that one lender that would really be able to work with all my clients on the commercial scale. So that was one reason why Tactical Mortgage did uh, go into that avenue to basically uh, fill that gap. Mm -hmm. Because there is a big gap and it's more than uh, just the non-asset based, you know, um, you know, we're looking into all avenues with uh, a few different banks and a few different um, private lenders to make sure that our clients, you know, can purchase that church because, you know, there are certain banks that don't like churches. There are certain banks that don't like restaurants, of course. Hmm. Uh, but we want to make sure that <clears throat> anybody that comes to us, we're able to facilitate their needs if there's a product out there. Right. And, and restaurants are tough, you know, uh, it's a very tough business. A lot of financing, you know, a lot of times we've done equipment financing over the years and, and restaurants, man, they're just like, oh, you know, and, and I get it. Restaurants open, they close, they, you know, when you're financing stuff for five years, you know, we, we did some financing in house for a, a client that they're out of business in less than a year, you know? And so it's, it's a bad deal for us. We, we took that one pretty hard. But it's just anytime you're putting capital out there, you got to cover your bases. Yes, so the great thing about dealing with experts that have been in the industry for a long time is you guys know what the banks are looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and you're doing it from a customer service point of view and uh, doing it from a, a, a realtor friendly point of view, obviously. Um, so it sounds like you guys got a lot of good stuff going for you. So kind of wrapping up, I, I know you, it seems like you guys have a lot of tread on the tires seems like you're you know you've been in business for a while but it seems like you guys have some pretty big goals yes sir yeah um so as you mentioned that uh one thing i want to kind of chime back in on is what gary was talking <clears throat> is you know being in this business you meet so many good people and even like you calling us in to do this podcast mm -hmm. it's, you know every day you work and you you know you run into somebody and you learn their side of what they're going through and what you know what they're learning and what broadens their day and all that so mm -hmm. to be honest with you i mean even as just tactical mortgage you know we want to kind of mold that as a company into the most user-friendly client-based company as you know any question somebody has even if they're working with another lender mm -hmm. we'd like to get those calls and just answer anything from them and you know and, and help them in a the direction of you know use that other and this happens all the time you know, I'm already working with the lender, but, you know, I'm not getting them at five o'clock. Can you give me a pre-approval letter over and, you know, we'll get the pre-approval letter over and possibly they might still go back to that other lender. Mm -hmm. You know, people will play that game sometimes. Sure. So you try to at least, you know, be there for your realtors and all your business partners and everybody that you do get introduced right. to. Because, I mean, the client's going to pick what they're going to pick. They're going to go with what they're going to go with. You can be that, you know, that figure to say, hey, I am the best. I know I'm the best. And. I got the best products, you know, mm -hmm. I'm always there for you, but this industry, you know, you meet so many good people and saying that, you know, that that's just what we want to mold, you know, our, the development of tactical mortgage. We just want to keep everybody in house happy, everybody outside the house happy and just build this company to where we want it to be. So sure. keep that trust. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, when a real estate agent brings their customers and says, Hey, you know, this, this lender is great. They'll be able to, uh, facilitate this and answer your questions even after hours. I mean, that's a lot of trust, mm -hmm. you know, and basically I've, I went around, I tried other, other lenders at different points in time and, and had to use different lenders when, you know, my clients wanted to use those above, you know, my preferred lender. Sure. Um, and that trust is hard, you know, it's, it's easily broken and, you know, we just, uh, want, the real estate agents 
you know, Fayetteville, Raleigh's running areas to, you know, give us a try. And DARE is great, but we have uh, other great lenders that, um, of course, if they're running into a pickle, DARE can help them out as well uh, with all his experience. But um, it's really that, that trust with your client and ultimately, you know, everybody's commission mm -hmm. and the buyer's expectations and, you know, finding that home or that investment that they're really needing to progress for their future. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, kind of wrapping up with this is, and I think we may even have, may maybe had this type of a conversation, but I think the way I think about it is I always try to think long-term when it comes to clients. So it's, Ultimately, if I just treat a client like I want to be treated, uh, didn't you call me about a second keypad or something? Yeah. Okay, I, I thought so. Yeah. yeah. So I'll give you a great example, and I'm sure you guys do the same thing in your industry, whatever that may be, but a client will call up and say, we want a second keypad. And I, I'll typically say, well, we can do it, but what do you want it for? Yeah. You know, because what I'm doing is I'm trying to get a feel for what your need is. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, it's like, well, you don't need that. Let me, you could do this and it's a lot less money yeah. and, and, you brought up this and more functional and you get more benefit. And, uh, you know, a lot of times customers will say, well, I want a camera here and a camera here. I'm like, well, what are you trying to do? You know, and that's where you bring the service and expertise to somebody. And even though I might cost myself two or $300 on that deal or, you know, less gross revenue the client sees that at the end of the day, it's like a, a Derek Haley is going to be like, man, that guy just talked me out of spending money with him. And the trust level goes through the roof. You get referrals. That's my guy. For right. Anything I need in that field. Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot more comfort for that client. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even when you said that to me, Hey, let's just get you one of the pocket, you know, keypad or uh, key fobs. Yep. Key fobs. And you know, I told my wife and have, I think the key <clears throat> would be easier, but at the same time, you did try to save me money doing it. Just want to give you options, yeah, you know, and because, uh, because again, it's our job as professionals right. to know our industry, know the options, and it's our job to meet a client's needs. So if I can meet your needs more cost effectively, yeah, I'm in business for the long term. And you're going to get referrals out of that. Right. So people will mention your name out there. So. Yeah. So, uh, Glad to meet some other business owners that are out there doing their best and growing and, and trying to do business the right way. We're, uh, we're a little late for a, a, a wine party tonight, uh, meeting a future congresswoman tonight. And uh, other than that, we're going to go get some wine. Uh, so thanks for joining us for another Five Things Podcast. Thank you uh, for joining us, Thank guys. Thanks for having us, man. Appreciate we appreciate it. All right. See you next time. Hello, this is Brian Smith, and thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more valuable content.